Hey everyone, I hope you're well, and today I'm going to be telling you about how I solved a problem in my observatory. My name's Glenn, and you're watching Astrobloke. Hi all. So, anybody that follows me, you know I built a roll-off roof observatory and I have two scope setups in there. I've got two peers and on one peer I've got my EQ8 and on the other peer I've got my EQ6, both by Skywatcher. And at the moment I've got two Newtonian scopes mounted on there. Now the EQ8 and my CT10 is my main rig and that is connected to a tower PC here in my warm room and it operates my observatory completely so it detects the roof as well opening and closing the roof but I've got a weather station that I recently fitted by Lunatico and my last video is all about that and that's been a fantastic uh, addition to my observatory it's basically keeping an eye on all the conditions, making sure that it's safe for the roof to be open. And if, for any reason, things change and the roof uh, is open and the weather changes, like it gets cloudy or it's gonna rain or something like that, the Lunatico will tell my computer, yep, yeah, it's not safe anymore, and uh, it'll park the scope and it'll close the roof. And what it will do is it'll actually hold it in that position um, so that if the weather did improve, everything will start up again, which is absolutely fantastic. So I don't miss a minute of clear sky. The problem I was having, however, is my second rig is not connected to the roof or the Lunatico. And so it didn't know if the weather had changed and the roof had closed unless I was able to be there at the time and so would just continue imaging with the roof closed. So I was just basically imaging the inside of the observatory, which is a complete waste of uh, time and energy. And what would be perfect is if that scope knew what the first scope was doing. So anyway, I've, I've been doing a bit of research and um, talking on some different forums. A few ideas were thrown out about some external scripts, other different ways of doing it. And then I stumbled across the Alpaca server within ASCOM. I was also shown this by my good friend Daryl, who I've been doing lots of work with, hoping to improve the Arduino system for the roof to include a safety sensor for the scope, but more about that in the future. And we've also been developing a new ASCOM driver for roof control as well. But Daryl said to me, have you looked at the Alpaca? So I thought I need to look at this. He sent me some details. And basically it's uh, really, really effective and works great. And I'm gonna share that with you today so that if you have a similar situation, you can use this as a solution too. So what the Alpaca server does is you set it up telling it what uh, device you'd like to share across maybe a few different computers. And what it does is it throws out an IP address for that device. So for me, using the Lunatico weather uh, station, the Cloud Watcher, I can throw out an IP address for the safety switch and the weather station, the weather observing conditions by Lunatico as an IP address. And what that means is the second computer through Nina can actually see those uh, IP addresses as items on the drop down menu. Um, so straight away, it's like the Cloud Watcher is plugged into both, but it's not. It's just plugged into one and it's pushing out an IP address for that uh, device. The only restriction I found with everything is you need to make sure that both systems are using the IP driver. Uh, because if you have one using just the normal driver that you would you would normally have in there and the other one using the IP, it, it starts to conflict and things don't work. But if they're both using the IP driver, everything works fine. But I'll be showing you this anyway. 
And it, anyway, this works fantastic. So now, if I get an unsafe condition, both computers know it's unsafe. And written in the Nanina uh, sequence, I can now simultaneously park both scopes and then the roof can close. And they will hold their position until it's safe again, where the roof will open and they will resume what they were doing. This is a dream for me. It's brilliant. And uh, this works really effectively. I had one issue when I initially tried to set it up and that was all down to the Windows firewall. So you've got to make sure that the computer that's first of all sending the outgoing message, that the firewall's not blocking it, and all of your computers that are reading it into it, that their firewalls are not blocking it coming in. So I had a bit of an issue on the computer that was sending out the server. The firewall was uh, causing issues on that, but you just need to make sure you give it the right permissions and then everything will run smoothly. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump onto Nina and I'm just gonna show you a small sketch or uh, sequence that I've uh, built to test the actual dome and show you it working and how it all operates. Um, and then we'll start to show you the server and then hopefully um, my job here will be done. First things first, I'll put a link in the description of this video to this website, but basically this is where you get the ASCOM remote server from. Um, I've got the latest uh, ASCOM uh, platform downloaded, which is uh, version seven, number two. So if you just come on to here, click latest, and then scroll down, you'll see ASCOM remote uh, setup XE. This is what you require, download that file, and that will give you the remote server. So what I want to show you now is the server that the ASCOM Alpaca gives out that you're going to connect to. So at the moment it's running, but if I just push setup, it will stop it from running. And you can see here the setup page. And basically on the drop down menus here, you can list whatever equipment it is that you want to be sent out as an IP address that everything can share. So here you can see I've got the safety monitor and the observing conditions. And the drop down here is, you know, all of the equipment that you've got connected to this computer. Now, you've got a configuration page here, which uh, tells you what the IP addresses are going to be. Um, I just put all IP addresses, so you're going to pick them all up. And then here we've got a discovery listening port, and it's defaulted to 3227. Um, and I'll show you where that is on Nina. So if I make sure that's all running that's all running now, okay, and that's giving out an IP address for the weather station, my Lunatico. If you go into Nina, and you come down to the settings page and to equipment, you'll see in the bottom right hand side here, the ASCOM Alpaca Discovery, and there's that port number again, 3227. You should only change that port number on both if you're getting a clash with something else, but it shouldn't, you should be okay. So what this is saying is it's looking at that port, looking for any drivers that that server is giving out. So if I now go to the weather station on the drop down, you'll see a list of all the hardwired things that I've got plugged in, which is the Lunatico, but you'll also see here ASCOM Alpaca, and that is where the web or the IP address is being given off that can be shared. So if I click on that and push connect, that's now connected and exactly the same for the safety monitor. So they're now connected to the uh, driver that's been shared via this server. As you can see, it's moving. This is where it's reading the weather station and giving out the information that's needed. If I go to my EQ6, it's exactly the same. We just basically go to the device and you can see there in the drop down alpaca you've got the lunatico cloud watch your observing conditions so we can connect to that it's exactly the same as the one we've got on the eq8 and again the safety monitor and we can connect to that and now what you've got is you've got um that lunatico weather station 
although it's only connected to one PC, being shared with as many PCs as you've got that you need to. So if you've got an array of scopes and you need to be able to read that one um, device, this will do it. They will all do it via the uh, IP address. So now it's running um, and at the moment it's in a safe condition. So I'm just going to have a look at that. Right, it's safe because it's got dark enough. Earlier on it wasn't, it wasn't safe, it's light. If I put it to light being unsafe, you'll see it go to uh, red and then a slight pause will happen and then it goes on the Nina, it reads it and it's saying it's unsafe and that's how it works. But let me show you it in a routine and how it all operates. Okay, time to show you uh, how this all works. So we've got the remote server running and everything is connected uh, to the Lunatico Cloud Watcher via the server. So both setups are ready to go. Um, you'll see here that on my EQ8, it's saying it's not safe. And as you look at the Lunatico, it's in an unsafe condition because at the moment it's too bright to image. Um, and if I show you my other rig, which is the EQ6, again, it's not in a safe condition. Okay, so on both of my rigs, I actually have um, a little test um, set up for the dome. I called it dome setup test, but basically it gives us this a chance to demonstrate what this can do. So I'll go to my main one and download my dome test. So basically this has got all like the roof opening, scope slewing, um, but, and a bit of imaging, but there's no guiding or anything. So obviously there won't be any stars and no um, slewing centers and things like that. What it does have built into it though, is the safety switch so that if conditions become unsafe, it will do what it would do in the night. So if it was to cloud over or start raining, this is what the system will do. So what I'll do is I'll push play on both of these and you'll notice that it reports it's waiting for a safe condition and that's how I have it set up. So what we'll do is we'll via the Lunatico is we'll cheat and say that it's dark now and you'll see that the Lunatico will go to a safe condition and it will go green there. And what will happen is a few seconds later the safe uh, we'll switch across into the Nina side. Um, just waiting for it. There's the tick and the routine starts. The roof is opening. And I'll show you the other rig, which is the EQ6. And if I go to the there, you'll see the tick there is the same. So now that routine is starting. So it's going to go for its usual thing of opening the roof and then the scoops, uh, scopes are going to slew to the target I've put in there. So we just wait for them to find their positions and they'll start imaging. So they're both moving now, which is good. I actually quite like watching them move in synchronization. It looks pretty cool. I should do it to music, some orchestral music. I'll turn the uh, camera off for a second. I'm just sorting that out. I've got quite a lot of windows open on my screen, so I'm trying to work it all out at the moment. Uh, there it is. Let's just get that a little bit bigger on there so you can see clearly what the scopes are doing. So they're now in position and they're as basically through the routine they'll be imaging. So I've got them imaging, they won't be taking pictures of anything. Um, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna simulate an unsafe condition. So we're gonna say that light is unsafe. So what will happen is the same again, this will cycle to red to say that it's unsafe, and there it goes. And the same will happen via the uh, ASCOM server. It will send out the same signal to both rigs that the situation is unsafe and there's the cross so what should happen now is both scopes will know it's unsafe and they will park 
Once parked, the roof will close and it should hold that situation until either the sequence ends or the conditions change and it becomes safe again. And this is what I really love about this setup is that you're never going to lose any time of, of, of imaging. So if you do get, say, clouds at early hours of the morning around, say, 2 a.m. and you're asleep, and it might just be for an hour, yeah, you're going to hold everything safe for that hour, and then after that hour, if it clears again and it's good, everything will resume, so you're not losing anything. Whereas before, I would be like, oh, at 2, it's going to get a bit iffy. I'll just shut the roof at that time and leave it shut for the rest of the night. This will keep it going. So if it, if it gets better, it will reopen and carry on with the imaging. So the scopes have parked. There's a slight delay that I've built into the routine so that we, everything has time to settle and then the roof closes and you can see it closing there. So the cameras and the dew straps and everything else will stay on, keeping everything ready. And basically this will now stay in this state until the end of the night's routine where it will just completely close down. Now, if for however, these conditions change and it becomes safe again, I'm just gonna click that to uh, show it going back. And then you should see this one click back to safe. There we go, it's gone safe on the Lunatico. So this will go from the cross to the tick. And the same with the EQ6, it's gone to a tick now. Go back to the Obsi, and that's also ticked. And again, the roof opens and both scopes now will slew back to their target and carry on imaging. And this is fantastic. This is exactly um, the way I want it. Everything's being looked after and it means I can get a nice sound sleep. And there you can see the scopes are going back to exactly where they were and carrying on the imaging. So that, that's great, everything working as it should. So there you have it, that's the Alpaca uh, ASCOM server doing a fantastic job for me and my observatory. Um, it's definitely got me over a problem where I wanted my two scopes to be sharing some information and it's allowed that to happen. I'm sure there's many, many uses for this um, and it works really reliably. Um, I'm really impressed with it. So if it's something you need, then hopefully this can work well for you too. Um, if you have any questions, please let them know. Uh, put them in the comments section. Um, I will respond. So um, please uh, feel free to write what you need. Um, if you uh, have enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to support us further, there's a join button or I do have Patreon where I'm going to start uploading a lot more um, content just for members only. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch my video and I hope you all keep well. Please keep looking up and clear skies.